Welcome to Hong Kong. I'm here with Oliver Rowland. How you doing? Very good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You're going to take me on a little drive around Hong Kong, around the track. We're going to look out, have a bit of a chat because I want to know more about you. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're in Hong Kong. What do you think? Like the first time I saw it, I was pretty taken back. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, there's so many nice buildings around. Have you seen the skyscrapers last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got here last night. It's always a bit weird for me. It's surreal that this is just a fully functioning road right now. There's taxis, there's cars driving, but come Sunday, this is going to turn into an absolute arena of action. Yeah. How are you feeling about this track? I think every Formula E track that we go to is pretty exciting and it's pretty unique in its own way. There's absolutely zero room for mistake. The cars are difficult to drive. But I think, look, when you drive down here and you see all the, the buildings around you and you know where you are, and you know, I'm just excited to get going. We're in a Nissan Leaf, road cars, electric cars. There's a lot of similar things. Like this car has regen, for example, right? You so know, that's why Formula E is growing so much, because all the manufacturers are going towards electric on the road. Um, and what we do in Formula E is pretty much the same as all the technology in here. So. Probably good that it has it in this car, not so much in the Formula E car. But you know, you can actually drive this with one pedal. Yeah, I was given a little bit of a demonstration oh, right, before we left. Yeah, of course. So you just I'm basically lift off yeah. and then the regen kicks in and stops you... alone, yeah. I'm not sure I'd quite fancy that in my race car, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's cool on the street. Yeah. It's safe to say that you've had a very decent start. I mean, you were the first of the rookies to score points, I think. And that was in your first race, right? You know, the, I have to say a huge thanks to Nissan because, you know, each race we get better and better. And I think in Mexico, we didn't expect to be super strong, and we were. Here, I think, is slightly better for us. Um, but then again, it's going to be wet. That kind of throws everything out the window, you know, form, performance. And I think, again, it's going to come down to driving ability, who can find the limit with the car, find the grip. So, talk to me about your teammate, a Formula E veteran. What's he like as a teammate? So, you know, when I arrived, I didn't know what to expect. You know, he's just been amazing. And even in Mexico, when, when I qualified pole, you know, at some points I, I was a bit nervous because I knew that he'd given me the tools to do the job. And when I pulled up to the Weybridge, he, he parked in my mirror, like behind like that car, <laughs> and, and I was looking at him and, and he was shouting, Ollie baby, and he was slapping <laughs> the side of his car. There's something that's quite interesting about Formula E. There's not as much politics as there maybe is in other motorsports. But yeah, I think you're exactly right. You, you know, it's just got a real friendly, good atmosphere. And not many motorsport paddocks have that, and it's quite unique. If you weren't a racing driver, what would you be? I have no idea, to be honest. I mean, from the age of three or four, I was obsessed with motorsport. Since then, I've just focused on being a racing driver. So it's very hard for someone to say, what would you be if you weren't a racing driver? And to be honest, it takes completely over your life. Right, here we have it. Thanks very much for the lift and the chat. Pleasure. No Best of luck this weekend. Best of luck for the season. Yeah, we'll see what happens.